Hey everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I picked up this Atari at a yard sale and it does not appear to work. I just get snow on the screen. It looks like it's trying to do something, but the uh, games are pretty tough to plug in and uh, yeah, I'm not getting anything on the screen. Part of the issue I'm dealing with is the fact that my stupid TV does not want to stay on channel three and just let me see the snow. Uh, instead, it is um, deciding that it's smarter than me and wants to black out the screen for my convenience. And that's pretty annoying, but uh, I'm gonna take this thing apart and see what I can come up with. So you can see as I open this thing up, I haven't pulled the cover off yet, but uh, there's little like egg shells that are uh, in here. I don't know what they're all about, um, but something reproduced in this thing. Uh, so I don't know, I've never, so I own the original 2600 wood grain one, but uh, I've never, attempted to work on another one since, or even attempted to work on that one as a kid. Uh, so let's see what happens. Is there something behind the screw? I feel like there might be. I accidentally smashed some of my eggs. Um, there appear to be little clips down in here. I can't really tell which way they go. Oh, there we go. I think I got two of them out. There we go. All right, so this is the inside of what is affectionately known as the Atari 2600 Junior. Um, it doesn't look as crusty as I was expecting. I mean, we've got a little bit of rust down here, uh, but overall, I was kind of expecting it to be crustier given how it feels when you plug a cartridge in and stuff like that. All right, so I took a little bit of this deoxid stuff that I got in a previous mailbag and um, I actually put it in one of these little needle nose bottles so I didn't have to spray it all over the place. And I put a little bit in here, put some in the different switches that were acting up, and I think I may have made some progress. Let's see. So as you can see, it's uh, not pretty, but it is sort of functioning, and uh, that's a good sign to me. Uh, we're making some progress. All right, so that gives us a couple of different options. Um, we could have some bad solder joints that are just from either getting hot and cold or, you know, these things get abused. People are shoving games in them and all that kind of stuff. So there could be some bad solder joints. We'll check for that. Um, there could also be some bad capacitors or maybe even like this voltage regulator. I'm guessing that's a voltage regulator. It could be uh, going bad, so we'll be checking that. So the third thing it could be is something going on with the video circuit, most likely the RF modulator. And um, what I've been reading is a lot of people do what they call a composite video mod, where you uh, give it the ability to use these yellow, red, and white cables and uh, you can connect it easier to more modern TVs and things like that. And uh, I was looking on eBay and a kit to do that is something like 10 or $15. It's a little circuit board and a couple of components. And then I remembered, PCB Way sponsors my channel, which means I can have circuit boards shipped directly to my door. And in fact, anyone can go to PCBWay.com and order these boards. For me, it would only be $15.50 to have 30 of them shipped straight to my door. That's less than 50 cents each. I'm gonna order those right now. But while I'm waiting for those PCBs to come in, I'm going to uh, take off this RF shield and see if I can find any surprises under here. It looks like it's just sort of held on by this uh, metal being twisted. So I'm gonna have, probably have to fiddle with it for a little bit, but I'm gonna come around with some pliers and try to straighten this out and uh, I'll get the shield off and show you guys what I find. All right, so that came off. There's one more over here I didn't see. And I'm assuming this is gonna come off with just a little bit of persuasion. This one's a little twisted. All right, so there is the naked Atari. Um, I decided to take my time getting that off. No sense damaging the board at this point. Um, but the good news is I don't see anything exploded. I mean, this capacitor could be bad. Um, you only have a couple of electrolytics on the whole thing. That one, eh, we'll see. So while we're waiting for those PCBs to come in, let's give this thing a quick recap. We're gonna start off with this uh, 2200 microfarad cap, and then I think there's four other electrolytics over here. I'm not gonna replace these just yet, but we'll take a look at those in just a minute. <laughs> Now, I don't have another one of these axial capacitors uh, in that size, 2200 microfarads, but I do have this one, and that's one of the cool things about this. Uh, if I grab my Kiwitz meter over here, you can see that we're just going from positive to ground, and so these two aren't connected, but all of these are connected to each other, 
And so you can actually put the capacitor from here to anywhere along these lines, uh, whatever fits. So you don't have to find one that's the same physical size as this. A little bit much on the solder on this one, but we're gonna call that good. And I'm gonna take care of these three right now. Okay, so to recap, I just recapped four caps and now I need to plug the thing in and see if I made it better or turned this so-so Atari into a bigger pile of crap. Okay, so as you can see, um, recapping the board did not actually solve any of my problems, but I know it's a common thing that they go bad, so I don't feel bad about recapping it. The next thing I'm gonna do is take a look at the voltage regulator. The voltage regulator on this thing is a 7805, which considering this thing is 35, 40 years old, uh, and they still ship that part out today, says something, but they do go bad. And uh, my understanding is that a lot of the ones they shipped on these things are uh, half an amp and the newer ones can handle an amp and I think that's considered somewhat necessary for these things so I'm gonna go ahead and swap this part out with one that I had in stock this thing had some thermal paste under it so what I'm gonna do is uh, take some isopropyl alcohol 91% and drip it on here and clean it off and then I'm gonna replace it with some fresh thermal paste so I got that soldered in place and I went ahead and bent it over and made sure that the holes were gonna line up so I can tilt it back up just a little bit and uh, slip a little of this just just cheap thermal paste. I'm not using like Arctic silver or anything fancy on that. Uh, but we're just gonna slip a little bit of thermal paste under there. Now, you don't need too much. I might have even put a little bit too much. Uh, the point is not to flood the thing, but to just get a nice thin seal and whatever squeezes out the side, squeeze out the side. We're gonna put the screw back through and find the little nut and tighten it down. Okay, so I was able to make some good progress on this thing. It wasn't working at all and now it is working, but we still have a little bit of work to do. What is this? To another maker, lovepcbway.com. These things got here so fast. Look at this. Ah. These things are beautiful. It's hard to imagine that we can have a board, order it from the United States, have it manufactured in China, and back to me in the United States in about a week. This thing is gonna be a snap to build. What? It's already built? It's so easy. Just a couple of resistors and a transistor and I'm ready to go. Thanks, PCBWay.com. So in order to put this bad boy in, I'm gonna need to remove a couple of resistors and this transistor and uh, desolder a hole over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and it'll be easier to show you what was removed after I'm done. All right, so let me show you a little bit about what I did and why I did it. Uh, this hole here, A3, was filled with solder and uh, I flipped the board over and sucked the solder out and that's where we're gonna grab the audio for our component out. Um, coming down here, I removed this resistor, R56, and I'm gonna come up here, and this is where the video out comes from, and it's gonna go from here to the board. Uh, I also pulled this transistor, Q4, out of here, and I'm gonna be tapping in right there to get my five volts to power the board. Um, I also came up here and removed resistor C33 and R17 because the internet told me to. And uh, my plan is to come up here and put the composite video mod up here and tap into ground right here on this ground plane. So with this thing being a yard sale find, I definitely don't know what I don't know. And so uh, I'm not 100% sure this thing will ever work. So what I decided I wanna do is take this board and I'm gonna attach female headers to it and I'm gonna use DuPont wires to hook this stuff up temporarily and just actually solder uh, RCA cables right to here. So what that means is that nothing will be permanently attached. If I have to do more work on the board, uh, I'll be able to do that and I'll just get to see is this composite mod giving me an improvement over what I had before? So I have made the basic connections to the board. We've got the audio, which technically doesn't need to go through the board at all. It could go straight to the RCA jack. We've got the video, we have the five volts, we have the ground, and all the inputs are hooked up. So the only thing left to do is to turn it on. And you'll see that compared to what we had before, we have a fantastic picture.
So I actually have a ton more that I want to say about the whole process of diagnosing and getting this thing working, but I feel like that deserves a separate video. So um, I do appreciate you guys watching and I hope you learned a little bit. The uh, links to these boards and a better hookup guide will be in the description. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a great day.